let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It was five weeks ago that we started this Lenten journey. And here at school, we take our palms and palm crosses that we use on Good Friday, and we burn them and we make ashes. So many churches do the same thing. And we have quite a bit left over, but we have these ashes and we use them to begin the very beginning of our season of Lent, where we're invited to the observance of a Holy Lent, that we are, uh, are invited to, to begin to understand ourselves and our life and the rhythm of life uh, in a new way and afresh, or maybe again for the first time. We're marked with the ashes and reminded that we are dust and to dust that we shall return. In today's lessons, we're invited to consider and think about what is life and what does it mean to be fully alive? In our first reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, we have this wonderful image of the Valley of Dry Bones, a place where we might find ourselves for any number of reasons, whether it's from our own physical ailments that we might be struggling, or maybe it's a spiritual or mental anguish that we have as well. We can feel that we are alone and in a desolate place. We can feel overcome and full of anxiety. These are real and true emotions and they're things that affect us daily. In our time in this midst of this pandemic, we find that these perhaps are maybe even more common to us now than they were beforehand with stresses that are different, but added on to the already stressful lives that we might already be lead leading. And yet in the midst of this, God tells the prophet to speak God's word. And it's God's word that brings those bones back to life. It's God's word of healing and comfort, God's word of life that brings those bones together and gives them a new hope. In our life, we're invited to hear God's word spoken to us as well. We're invited to hear it and be brought back to life. In today's gospel reading, we have the story of Lazarus being raised from the dead. And here, Jesus, you know, we don't always understand what God's doing in the midst of what's going on. Mary and Martha for sure did not understand what Jesus was up to. They actually were quite frustrated with him, that he let their brother die in their eyes, that he had not been there when they needed him. And yet he was there with them the whole time. And he comes and he speaks God's word to Lazarus laying in the tomb and Lazarus is brought back to life. He is brought back to the land of the living and he is made whole. This is an invitation for us again. Where are we hearing God's word? Where is it being spoken to us? Who is it being spoken to us by? The other question I think that it asks is, who are we speaking God's word to? How are we helping to give life to other people? How are we helping to give life to those who are in that valley of dry bones, who are laying in a tomb, who feel lonely and isolated during this time of their lives and this time in our world. And then our second reading is one that we must consider, the reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, in which he has a juxtaposition here between what is death and what is life, between what is good and what is evil, and and it's a choice that's being made by each Christian person to live into the spirit, to live into the soul part of us, to be aware that many of our concerns and desires and other things that we have that produce so much anxiety in us and for us are not life-giving and aren't from God. St. Paul invites us to be people of spirit, people of the word living in us, he invites us to become more like Christ, living words of God, living in our world and being and putting into action the life-giving power of God's word 
in our very being, in our very daily living. I think this is part of our homework this week, in this our last week of Lent before we enter into Holy Week, is to consider where God's Word is active in our life. Where is that powerful, life-giving Word active, and where do we need it perhaps most that we haven't yet let it penetrate? Where are those dry bone valleys in our lives and in our hearts and in our minds? How can we let God's word penetrate us deeply? And how can we share that word with others? How can we do as St. Paul implores us to do? Be children who are of God, who are living in the spirit. Be being people who are making Christ known in our being, letting the word be our guide, letting it be our true identity. I think if we do this, my friends, things will be very different for us. The struggles and the heartaches and the pains and the anxieties and all of those things will still be there for us. It's not that they magically go away, but we'll have a new sense of strength, a new sense of calm, a new sense of, of being able to face the challenges that we have and a deeper trust and reliance on God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.